According to Jordan Belfort, one of the most notorious and world-renowned salesmen in the world, the judgment or impression of a person can be established in just four seconds. In those four brief seconds, it's super important to do things in the right way for somebody to warn to you, trust you, and hopefully see you as an expert. But the problem is, how do you make a great first impression? In this video, I'm going to give you the seven tips on how to make a great first impression that will make you look like a person with unbelievable charisma and unshakable confidence. But if you're new here, my name is Brendan. I'm a recovering accountant based here in London, and I help millennials navigate busy lives and make sure that work doesn't suck. So how do we make a great first impression? That is a good question. These tips are the result of some of my experiences. Some have been good, some have been not so good, but all will help us understand how to get full marks when meeting someone for the first time. So, number one, dress appropriately. Many people believe in the saying that you should never judge a book by its cover, and well, that is true, because, well, we, we shouldn't, right? But we also have to admit that at some point, even if mistakenly, we have all judged a person based on their appearance or how they dress. Was it the ankle swinging trousers that you turned your nose up at? Or the ripped jeans that just turned you off? Whatever the reason, it might not be your style, your preference, or just something that you wouldn't wear. I mean, we are all guilty of jumping to conclusions. Let's imagine for a moment that you are going to an important business meeting full of senior execs. They are all suited and booting and looking sharp, all wearing suits and ties. And then there's you. You're wearing a t-shirt and trousers. You've obviously got shoes and socks on. Not only do you feel really awkward, you'll also be overcome with pangs of doubt. What will the executives think of you? Are you going to be worth their trust? I would hope that everybody looks past your clothing misstep, but there is a strong chance that the answer to these questions could be no. Alternatively, how about going on a date with somebody? I mean, this could be your first date. I mean, the, the nerves are jangling, the heart is pounding, but you are excited about this encounter. The problem is you completely misjudged the situation and went on your date wearing only a t-shirt, shorts, and a pair of flip-flops. If you are the girl or boy being met, what would you think about your date? I'm willing to bet that the answer is probably not good. Now, I know that these are quite extreme examples, but it is difficult to make a second first impression. That's why it's great to make a first impression. You need to nail the dress code. It doesn't matter what that code is, but it needs to be appropriate to the situation, event, or occasion. Now here's a quick bonus tip. I was told when training as an accountant with one of the big four accountancy firms here in London that you should always dress for where you want to be, not for where you are. By that, the phrase means aim for success, i.e. where you want to be, not for the moment that you're currently in. I took this to heart, actually, and you know, rather embarrassingly, I went to the shopping mall and instead of buying a cheap bog standard suit, I spent a little bit more and had it fitted. Yes, it cost a bit more, but me, it made me feel good. Not only did it look good, it made me feel a million dollars. A million dollars may be better off saying a million pounds, but I'd gone from a trainee accountant to a successful executive in one fell swoop. Well, in my head at least. So if you're going to go to a business meeting, dress like an executive. If you're going to go on a date, dress like a gentleman who will really take care of his date. Ultimately, taking a moment to double check the dress code or check with a friend as to what you're wearing will save some embarrassing moments, but could also lead you to land the deal or date of your dreams. The second tip on making a great first impression is using your body language. Now, body language is so 
important. As defined by David Stevens, a senior mentor at the Body Language Academy, body language is the way the body communicates and reacts to the environment around it, as well as happening internally to a person. It's all the things that you don't say that create your first impression. Think about it. Have you experienced a situation where right before you talk to somebody, they irritate you in some way or another and you, you just cannot ex simply explain why? Yeah, I certainly can. Now I know this is judgmental and I've worked really hard to make sure it doesn't happen, but I'm sure we can all relate to it in some way, shape or form. The reason behind this reaction most of the time is their body language. I mean, you see the body language is very important in nonverbal communication. Your body language gives off signals as to the kind of person that you are. According to Albert Meriban, a psychology professor and famous for his relative importance of verbal and nonverbal messages, 55% of communication comes from body language. 38% is from the voice or tone of the speaker, and only 7% from the words that are said. Let that sink in for a moment. Only 7% of all importance communication comes from the words spoken. Wow. Perhaps I should stop speaking and do these videos through the medium of dance. Actually, you don't want to see that, although I have done the odd Friday dance. Don't worry though, as there are several things you can do to have effective body language, especially when you're meeting someone for the first time. The easiest method is to keep your posture open. Don't cross your arms or legs as this may give off the impression that you don't want to talk or you don't want to be disturbed. Now the act of crossing arms can give conflicting interpretations, especially if not taken into account with the whole picture. Something simple which we can all do is just make eye contact. You can accompany this with a friendly but firm handshake. Remember what those were before COVID times? The combination of these two acts will make you look like a confident individual and most likely raise your chances of creating a great first impression. Number three, let them know you care. So the third tip I have on making a great first impression is to let the other person know that you care. I mean, that phrase says it all, really. Everyone wants somebody to genuinely care about them. Even if it's your first time meeting someone, there are a variety of ways to let them know that you do care. An example of this is say, for example, when you're going on a date, we can show the other person we care by giving them some flowers or chocolate. I mean, this may for some be a little awkward, but really who doesn't like free chocolates? This little action is not only courteous, and I'm a huge stickler in manners and treating people correctly, and shows just how much you appreciate them. Even if it is your first time meeting. Manners are dying out and it hurts me. But manners cost nothing at the end of the day, but can make all the difference. The fourth tip I have on making a great first impression is tonality can make a great difference. You see, tonality is a very important and powerful tool in communication. As I said earlier, communication is 38% voice and tonality. It's not just what we say, but how we say it. I mean, imagine if you met someone for the first time and he or she suddenly breaks out into a gut-wrenching scream and shouts at you, what the f How would you feel? Would you be surprised, shock, or anger? Perhaps even a little of all three? I mean, we'd all be hard pressed not to, I reckon. The unprovocated shouting or aggression shown is not a great way to endear yourself to someone, that's for sure. But what does that do to our first impression? I mean, the chances are it's not good. I know it sounds obvious, but how your tonalities used can dramatically alter the way that you are viewed. If you want to have a successful and great first impression, make sure to be aware of how you come across. If it's important to you, practice the way you speak, the pitch, the rate, the volume, the inflections, the temper, the vocal variety, anything that can help improve your tonality. Seriously, practice it. When I started public speaking, I was very aware of the need to come across well. I'm fortunate that I enjoy public speaking and feel reasonably comfortable talking to an audience, but that doesn't mean I don't get nervous. The heart is still going like the clappers, certainly in the beginning. I'm 
just able to control it. That doesn't excuse the need to practice though, and as the special forces would say, hope for the best, plan for the worst. So whilst you might not be going into a war zone, hope alone is not enough. Get the plans nailed down, and I have no doubt that one of those elements will be the need to practice. So start now. Well, not exactly this minute, but after you've watched this video. The fifth tip I wanted to share with you is one I use regularly. It is my secret weapon. It completely disarms people, not literally from guns, etc. obviously, but that is to smile. Yep, that's right, smiling is a secret weapon and it wasn't just for Zoolander either because going into a situation where making a great first impression is vital, then smiling is your starting point. When we see a person with a calm demeanor and with a genuine smile, what do we feel? We most likely assume that that person is trustworthy and authentic. Smiling can also be a powerful weapon in creating a lasting first impression. It can also build rapport instantly and take you to a whole new level of communication. Smiling is very contagious. If we smile a lot, we often pass that positive vibes on to the person that we're talking to. So if we are meeting someone for the very first time and you greet that person with the warmest, sincerest smile, more likely than not, that person will be uplifted and energized too. Flashing a big smile will make you more confident happy, friendly, warm, and full of positive feelings. A genuine smile may start with the lips, but it also involves the eyes. The eyes communicate the emotions behind the smile. I'm sure you all have your smile nailed by now, but just in case, practice in front of a mirror so you can see what the other person will see when you greet them. By practicing now, you give yourself a much better chance of being perceived as someone who's friendly and accepting, intelligent, resourceful, honest and trustworthy. These are all great attributes which will contribute to making a fabulous first impression. Of course, you need the attributes to be true, so make sure that you work on those too. I mean, I remember when I was younger how talking to girls was always really nerve-wracking. I mean, building up the courage to say hello to someone you liked was hard. The fear of rejection was always very present in my mind, but to help overcome this, I would approach someone smiling. A smile is disarming. It helped me break the ice and start a conversation. I mean, I went on the premise of how difficult is it to not smile back to someone when they smile at you? Try it. See how you get on. The sixth tip may be one of the most important, and that is to actively listen. If you've ever listened to or read a self-help book about communication, active listening is likely to be one of the first things you hear. I've spoken about active listening a lot in previous videos and I would recommend this one here where I talk about how to be a great leader because leading is important as well as listening. As a life coach, I know how important active listening is. I would say that many people understand the definition but only a few selected individuals can really master it. Active listening is one of the great focal points of communication but it is far too easy to fall into the trap of passively listening to someone when they first meet. This could be because they are nervous or focusing too much on what they are going to say next. Active listening tells the other person that you also care about them, that you value them, and it is also a form of message that tells the other person that their thoughts are being heard and respected. The simplest method to demonstrate active listening is by just asking the person a specific question about what they've just said. Active listening also implies focusing on the person you're talking to, not having distractions like mobile phones on the table when you're talking because that creates an environment which can make you easily distracted and the alternative of moving it away helps you become better at active listening. 100% focus is needed if you want to have a smooth and great conversation with them. I mean, it, it may take time and you may need to stop your mind from wandering to what you'll have for supper that night or what you're going to do at the weekend. But if you can master the art of active listening, you will give yourself a significant advantage in creating a great first impression. And here we go. Number seven. The seventh and last tip I want to give you is just be yourself. You do indeed need to master the tips that I've talked through, but being yourself is super important. It shows authenticity. 
a word that is regularly overused, but in being true to yourself in how you act, speak and communicate means that you will always give your best. I think being honest and genuine in a meeting is the most powerful thing you can do, especially when meeting someone for the first time. Fundamentally, the person you are meeting is there to meet you, not the person you're trying to become. You just have to be confident, honest and authentic. By doing so, will help build trust with you. This doesn't mean you don't need to flex in different situations, but being aware of the nuances of a situation means that you may need to dial up or dial down particular elements that we've talked through. But I would say always be authentic. And there you have it. They are the seven simple tips to help make a fantastic first impression. If you love what you are seeing from the channel, please don't forget to hit the like button, but also push the bell icon too, so you will be updated for all of my future videos. I'd also really love to hear what your most unforgettable first impression moments are, so please do drop me a comment down below. But if you did like this video, I would recommend that you check out this video here, where I talk about how to sell yourself in an interview without coming across like a dick. So with that, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.